So the last time we met, I told you guys that I was gonna build the ship. Well, I tried to record that video and my audio came out great. If I must say so myself, some of my best work, uh, if I do say so myself. Uh, the one-liners were perfectly timed and droll and yeah but it is what it is it didn't record the Xbox didn't record the actual footage so this is the ship right here that I actually named in that video RIP video this is gonna be called the Red Hornet well if this is the Red Hornet here we go let me show you what it looks like and what I did since the last video. Right. So basically what we did was I changed these engines out and trust me they're not the permanent configuration of engines because my mobility is now down to 46. When I recorded the last video I had mobility up to 61 but I managed these Rockets are a little bit heavier, and I managed to squeeze more storage in. I got these two uh, shielded, and I got room for another little half one under underbelly there. So I got this over 10,000 in storage. So I'll give up a little bit of mobility when I'm packing this kind of firepower. As you can see, everything is fully leveled up like there's no more bars for anything else and it is what it is and I realized in the last video I didn't take you guys on a tour so what we could do is just see the layout real quick and I also like that this cockpit is low to the ground because on some of those more hostile planets you want to get higher ground and usually the bang out starts as soon as you exit your ship so that's a good spot to just jump up real quick and get away from most of the creatures. I haven't seen creatures that could jump up that high yet, but I'm sure you're out there. I spent a lot of my time on the show, so yeah. So yeah, we've got this. Here. I mean, this is like a simple, easy layout. You can't get this one wrong because I've built ships that I got lost in. So here's the infirmary, which gives us. Oh no, here's the workshop, sorry, which gives us access to our three primary workbenches. And this workshop happens to have a research lab in it, which is, which is good. And then on this side, I have the infirmary, this is a day which day also day. has a research lab, it should, something. and uh, it gives me this pharmaceutical lab, yeah, there's the research lab right there, it gives me this pharmaceutical lab, and then I've got this control I'm center, is this my, no, this is my all-in-one, so I've got access to a bed, this is a dangerous group. when it's not this occupied, you can get your level up bonus, there's my outpost. So the control center gave me four uh, crew members. I'm just this cockpit it. gave me an additional six. So now the total crew that I could carry on this ship is ten. So I could carry ten crew, ten thousand pounds of equipment. And I'd say we did pretty good with this one. So basically what I did was I just, like I said, the last video was just the nuts and bolts of how you want to put it together. And then you can go ahead and do exactly what I did and then hook it up. To get that cockpit, I had to go here. To the soul system. It's almost all the way to the left. Right? And they're right outside of Mars, orbiting Mars, in fact, is Deimos. 
So you just make your way to Deimos. This is a day. Set your course to Deimos, and when you get there, you'll be right at just look around for the for the space station. So yeah, that's just a quick update on the ship, which became my absolute best ship so far that I've built. I thought my last one was going to be very hard to beat. I'm just but I must say, I am truly impressed with, I mean, I'm not trying to toot my own horn here, you know, pretty much was just a roll of the dice and what was available at the vendor that I went to or whatever, whatever, but, like, I even went back and I changed the engine. And I reconfigured some stuff. I added a, a front strut here. Oh man, did I just take everything from the cargo hold? No, what the hell did I just do? Oh, no, I just went into the cargo hold. Anyway. I'm just scratching the So this landing bay was in the in the back before I kind of switched things around to get in the front because nothing is more annoying than a landing bay in the rear. Because nine out of ten times you'll land and the front of your ship will be facing wherever you have to go or what have you. When you're coming back, you want to run past your ship or whatever to get to the landing bay, so it's annoying. Uh, I tried to arrange the weapons as neatly and as ergonomically as possible. Even though I am going for no symmetry in this game, there is symmetry in the lack of symmetry. To me, this is an, an art piece. I could have made it more sleek, but I think the industrial look of the piping, just the bare roots, essential, what you need type of ship, I think it's great. This is the previous one, the aphid. The aphid is like a hotel in the sky, absolutely. Because this thing is huge inside. It's got a lot of habs, it's big. Its cargo capacity was 8950, which I thought was insurmountable at the time. How wrong I was. The goal is to go past that to pass the 10,000 I have and still have at least a 50 for maneuverability. This one is pretty cool. 4,100 earlier days of building, Cruise 8. It's huge inside. This was to rival that that other ship, the Conquest, or whatever, the biggest one you can buy from the vendors. This was to rival that one in looks and aesthetics. Although it's it's just as big. It's got three floors. It's, it's massive. Then there's the Wasp. I, I wanted to make, like, more of a saucer type of ship. Not, not long. It's a little short asymmetrical type of thing and I think this engine output worked really really good and I got a better reactor in here than I got on the other ship which is strange it needs a weapons upgrade to its ballistic weapons but it's got no missiles but this is what it is and the next one is the scarab the scarab was the one I did on the uh, the speed the time lapse and since that video, I added those two storage bins in the back that aren't color matched yet. And the next one is the Razor Leaf. You get this from the Mantis, and I did the full walkthrough of that, that layer and everything. So if you refer to that, you can go get this. And it doesn't look like this. I did some work to it. This is a work in progress. I'm going to keep adding to it. Then there's the Star Eagle for completing the uh, the Free Star Rangers uh, quest line storyline. And to tell you the truth, that and the Mantis storylines are the only ones that I've completed right now. For Ryujin, I am currently 
I'm supposed to go to that building in um, New Atlantis and uh, infiltrate the building and plant the this and that, do the yada yada. But I haven't gotten around to it. I did, I did most of the missions in the first playthrough. That's why I felt comfortable to ascend to see what was next. And now I see that I have to repeat all of the missions again in New Game Plus. This, this one I'm leaning more to the build portion of it and leveling up things like botany and gastronomy and things like that so I could see, unlock and expose the different things that the game has to explore. Um, and finally, the ecliptic bayonet. Um, I like this cockpit for the simple fact that it gives you the option to have two levels on your ship without having to have ladders in your ship. Because it's got two staircases that lead up to the deck of the ship. What I don't like about it is when you're out of the seat and you're walking around. Sometimes I like to be able to look out the cockpit and survey the area up close that I'm about to go into. And this gives very limited vi visibility for that. But there's another engine. This is just me playing with engine configurations, trying to squeeze the most out of them. That's really what it's about, balancing the energy configuration and the weight so you can get the, the most maneuverability. I'm probably not even using the right word, but speed, agility, so you can get out of the way quick. And this is another one with the landing bays in the rear, and I don't like that. But so far, this one's come out the best. It's got the 1600 shield. It's got uh, 10,280 cargo, 1528 hull, and it holds 1,100 fuel. It crews 10, 40 reactor, 24 light year jump speed, so you can pretty much go anywhere in this game in one jump. Um, yeah. I probably have to upgrade the weapons a little bit, like... I gotta play around with the weapons. I haven't gotten around to playing with the weapons and that stuff. Right now, I'm really focused on the engine to weight ratio and trying to get the most agile um, pilot, get the most agile vehicle for the, the engines and the cargo that I'm able to carry. So maybe less halves, more cargo bays. Uh, um, things like the brackets, um, let the landing gear also represent, um, some, some design elements, you know, like back here, it, it kind of acts like a little tail fin there thing, you know, a little aerodynamic accoutrement over here with the light on it, yeah, so, it is what it is at the end of the day, that's what we're doing over here. Thanks for pulling up. See you guys in the next one. And uh, I'm probably gonna go on a mission on the next one. Cause I got a bunch of them just waiting. I mean, I've done them already, but I'm probably gonna get around to them and see if I can ascend again. <clears throat> um, after I fully figure out the ship build and then the, uh, the outpost building, that's what I'm also working on, building some outposts. As you can see, I got I just got that greenhouse over there. Can't wait to see what that does. It's producing a um, molecular substrate right now. And I got another cargo link. So I got two cargo links. Just the one right there and one over there. Um... That's my animal husbandry area where I'm breeding something. Looks like a, a vampire bat and a squirrel at the same time. That's the XP farm. But this Schrodinger, this is like the best planet. Look at all that. Look at all that stuff out there to go in go and get XP off of. That Ankylosaurus that just walked by, 
that's one of the better things on this planet to get XP from. It gives you the max on this planet. But I will level up the planet also. And right now I have a, something on Serpentitis, Serpentis. And I will get to more stuff, but... Don't worry, we're gonna dig deeper and deeper into this game. I'm not one of those guys that does analysis or do math trying to figure everything out. Nah, I just play the game. I'm damn near 500 hours at this point into the game. I was level 100. Uh, level 97 currently. Uh, maybe a quarter of the way. To the next level so you know I got some insight into the game my difficulty is uh, very hard you know my saves are on, on every 30 minutes for pause so sometimes I just get caught out there I gotta remember to save often and sometimes I don't you know I'm trying to keep it as close to like some type of survival way as I possibly can, but yeah, we're going to dig deeper and deeper into it, and I'll show you how I got here, and show you what I do to upkeep all of these, I got about six or seven bases now, actually I think I've got eight, I've got eight bases currently, no, five bases currently, I'm going to build some more. I've got three more to build for the next level of uh, this outpost stuff here. Um, and we'll probably get into the, the perks that I picked and what I chose to level up. Rejuvenation, I strongly advise you level that up as quickly as you possibly can. Like if you're, if you're in here, definitely fitness, definitely weightlifting, maybe one in gymnastics, what wellness can't hurt but put enough so you can do rejuvenation because it's really easy to level this up all you gotta do is is run encumbered until your health goes below 25 percent do that a number of times for each level and you'll pass it with ease but we're gonna get into more and more stuff and i want to learn stuff and hopefully i can teach you some stuff so yeah that's about it thanks later